Welcome to week 10, everybody. If you're new here, hi, welcome to This Cat Can Ball, the show where we highlight one player each week who's largely been unknown to either riding the bench for a long time, uh, drafted late, or in some cases not even drafted at all. But they decided to show up this week and we're gonna give them their moment in the spotlight. Now, first, I wanna talk about four teams. Each one of these four teams was probably on top of the power rankings according to some website. And this week they suffered almost unexplainable loss. And when I talk about these teams, they're good bets to win every week, even if you don't know who their opponents are. Let's just talk about them real quick. The Ravens, as long as they got Lamar Jackson, they're gonna be competitive no matter what, right? You can put them up against pretty much anybody that'll hold their own. That's kind of the point of these four teams. Ravens, um, the Rams, they seemingly get better every week, not just by the play on the field, but transactions they make off the field. They keep getting better and better talent, and it's it's amazing, and it's just working in their favor. Maybe not this week, though. The Cardinals, who talks about them a lot? I talk about them a lot, right? I talk about the Cardinals all the time, and Kyler Murray, they were another team that fell, and who else? Let's talk about the defending Super Bowl champions, the Buccaneers years, right? Tom Perfect Brady. He actually lost a game this week. Now, when you look at the teams that beat him, you're like, well, maybe these teams are the up and coming uh, competitors, right? Maybe these teams are going to be the ones we're going to be talking about towards the end of the season. Now that we're already getting into the second half, we're getting into the playoff run. Not entirely. The Ravens lost to the Dolphins, which was really just a, there is no way anyone could have predicted that. I mean, good for the Dolphins, right? That was one hell of a win for them. But I think they were probably surprised more than anybody. Then you have the Buccaneers losing to the Washington football team. They were a playoff team last year. They won the NFC East, so it's not entirely out of the realm of them putting on a decent show, right? The Rams lost to the 49ers, still kind of a team that it's not a surprise when they pull off a good win because there's there's still some talent there. And the Cardinals losing at home, granted, without Kyler Murray, but still, that's one of the greatest and worst things about football is that you only get one chance. You don't get a series, you don't get do-overs, you just get one chance, and when your key player's out, he's out, and you, you're you going to lose that game, and that's too bad. They lost to the Carolina Panthers, who are still kind of in the weeds as being competitive or not. They started off strong, started to weaken, but now they are they might be looking to make a push towards a wild card spot. One of the big highlights though about the Panthers was the return of Superman himself. Cam Newton was back on the field, number one in Jersey and number one in Carolina fan base heart. And he showed up quick and strong right off the bat. Two first quarter touchdowns and it was like, wow, okay, we got, we got our Superman back. He didn't do much past that, but still, that's a huge boost for them. I mean, especially going against the Cardinals and they did win that game. Maybe Cam was that that jolt they needed. He had a really funny quote of uh, oh, response to a reporter that asked him later after the game, since he came in the first quarter, right? Two touchdowns. You didn't see much of him later in the game. They asked him, how much of the Carolina playbook did you know going into that game? He just said, two touchdowns worth. But I personally liked seeing him back on the field. I knew he still had gas left in the tank. Uh, he has He's already had an amazing career. Uh, is he Hall of Fame worthy? Uh, maybe. Uh, he was the first overall pick. He led the Panthers on a lot of playoff runs, got to the Super Bowl once, and that was during an MVP season, so he has the credentials. But I don't know if it's entirely Hall of Fame worthy. I personally put him in the ranks of like uh, Tony Romo, Donovan McNabb. Great players, um, just didn't quite solidify their career as a potential Hall of Famer. It was something for him though, because last year when he went to the Patriots, people were kind of thinking, okay, uh, maybe this is his last hurrah, right? Because the way he plays, he's a super physical player. He's a big guy, but he doesn't mind throwing himself into the fray and get beaten up. And he's been prone to some injuries, so people thought, okay, this might be his last, uh, you know, his last outing. And this season, he was actually cut in favor of Mac Jones, who's looking to be the best rookie quarterback. Not amazing. He's not pulling off like a Kyler Murray or a um, Justin Herbert, but he's he's showing to be the best so far out of the draft class. One of the great things about Cam, you know, like he instilled confidence into the Carolina as soon as he came back. He has so much, he exudes this. It's not so much arrogance, because he has a body of work to back up his his attitude and i like when uh when he was cut from the patriots and he said that his uh his i don't know, like how does he say it, charlie his aura or whatever his aura I was going to be too much for the team you know being all, all the hype that surrounds him it's going to be too much considering you have a rookie starting and uh, so it's probably better he remove himself but when he did so he still stayed in shape obviously they're going to have to bring him back they're going to have to give him a physical and make sure he was good to go and he was which leads me into the cat that showed this week that he can ball it's all about perseverance and waiting for your chance and sometimes you'll get multiple chances not always that chance you need to finally show the winner is deandre carter he's a receiver for the washington football team now this guy had one long journey to finally get to where he was this week he was an undrafted player 
out of Sacramento State. And I know what you're thinking, like, I didn't even know that college existed. Well, it's an FCS school. It's very small. They're in the Big Sky Conference, I believe. In the 2015 draft class, he wasn't picked up. He's been a member of not one, two, four, six, or seven, but eight teams in seven years, that's that's pretty amazing. And out of those eight teams, it wasn't until he got to his fifth. He was already halfway through this this journey through the NFL that he finally got time on the field. Those first four teams, he was only a practice squad member or an offseason, just someone on the roster. You know what I mean? Like he gets signed and cut between the times of like like February and April when there are no real activities going on but he's just on the roster didn't really get to do anything and they cut him and at one point in 2016 he was actually a substitute middle school teacher and at that point he can kind of he wouldn't be faulted for looking at his career and saying you know what I was a pretty good baller in my day I had a pretty good college career and I even bounced around a bit with some NFL teams there are very few people that can say that that had the that had the talent right there are four year starters on national champion college teams that, you know, they don't get a second in the pros. They don't get training camps. They don't get workouts. They don't get anything. This guy stuck with it. He was like, you know what, man? I'm going to keep on persisting. He was substitute teaching, mind you, but he kept getting uh, workouts, tryouts to get into uh, mini camps, to get onto the practice squad, and then finally get on the field. And like last week, I spoke about Cordell Patterson and how he's a multifaceted player, uh, returning kicks, punts, uh, running the ball, catching the ball. This guy is another one like that. He's a real small guy, too. He's 5'8", 190. He's that small, shifty guy. And now he's with the Washington football team, and he's finally getting a chance to shine. Last week, believe it or not, like I said, he was undrafted way back in 2015. Last week was his very first receiving touchdown in the NFL. Washington finally was a team that saw that this guy has something, right? This, this guy can ball, right? And also earlier in this season, he had a kickoff return for a touchdown. He won special team player of the week. Now he comes in against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? Defending champs. He's got to show up. And who's his quarterback? He's got Taylor Heineke. Another guy I mentioned last year who can ball. So we already know Taylor Heineke can ball. And he's got DeAndre Carter. In his second week in a row, he catches another touchdown pass, which is just like, it's showing like, you know what? Like he had the talent all along. And now that he's finally getting on the field, he's like, you know, like you, you give me the ball on kick returns. I can do something. He scored a touchdown. You line me up, you know, more than just like garbage points. You know, like usually when a player is that low down at the depth chart, it's not until the team's up by like 30 points that he'll finally get on the field. And he may not even get a pass thrown his way. But this time, they're giving him chances. They're putting him out in looks where he can get open. He was targeted six times. That's not bad considering Heineke threw 32 passes. Six of them went to Carter. You know, this whole season, it's a culmination of his of being on eight freaking teams, right? since 2015 all the way up till now and finally you know he's 28 years old he still has a lot of football left in him he's he finally gets to look back at all these coaches and gms and scouts that passed him up and well he's probably hoping they're all looking at him now and saying this cack of ball so i really hope you guys like the episode this week if you do please make sure to like and subscribe hit the bell to be notified when these come out they do come out weekly but just in case you forget the bell will notify you uh be sure to leave comments if you did like it or if you didn't like it interactivity is always the best way that this show gets better and that i improve uh so just one more time yeah like comment subscribe hit the bell i am omar and i will see you guys next week